Hi cutie pie! Today we're diving into a subject that can be both empowering and really challenging. Setting boundaries in relationships and even more making the decision that comes with following through. Whether it's a romantic partner, a friend or even a family member, there comes a point where we need to ask ourselves if the relationship is still healthy and if we are respecting our own limits. Sometimes setting boundaries isn't enough and we need to face the possibility of letting the relationship end or even choosing to end it ourselves. We're going to unpack why we second-guess the decisions, how we properly identify and process the emotions involved and how to heal no matter what type of relationship it is. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to mention that I'm not a mental health professional. Everything I share today comes from personal experience and research. It's really important to seek advice from a therapist or professional if you're struggling with emotional challenges. Watching this video can be a helpful part of your healing process, but professional guidance is always key. That being said, boundaries are an act of self-respect and care. Whether we are talking about romantic relationships, friendships or family dynamics, boundaries are what allow us to protect our emotional energy, ensure mutual respect and create space for healthy growth. When we don't set clear boundaries or when we set them but don't follow through, it can lead to feelings of resentment, frustration and emotional burnout. In the worst case, we end up in toxic dynamics, constantly second-guessing ourselves and questioning whether we are being too harsh or unrealistic. But here's the thing, boundaries are non-negotiable when it comes to maintaining our mental and emotional well-being. They aren't about being selfish, they are about creating balance. And Second guessing often happens because we're dealing with conflicting emotions. I am currently second guessing myself and that's um, why I'm making this video. I will come back to this in a little bit. Thing is, second guessing often happens because we're dealing with conflicting emotions. You might have set a boundary in a friendship, but when you start wondering if it was too harsh because the other person seemed hurt or in a family relationship, guilt may play a role, especially with parents or siblings, because we have been conditioned to feel responsible for their emotions. Especially uh, assigned female at birth fall into this trap um, because of socialization and how you got conditioned, right? This emotional confusion can happen because of something deeper, grief. Just like we grieve the end of a relationship, we also grieve when we make choices that may change the dynamic of a close connection. That grief makes us question if we are making the right call. The reason I'm talking about this today is a friendship breakup I recently went through and I know about some close friends that are also experiencing this on one level or another. So I recently had to end the close friendship with a person I felt very connected with, especially on a spiritual level, but their growth did not match my growth. We had multiple talks about how their tendency to hide and not communicate anymore as soon as a conflict arises didn't sit well with me and there was a pattern of saying something and not acting accordingly especially this saying something but not acting accordingly was deeply unhealthy for myself and they acted at least twice against my core values and i sat that with that for a while while I still wish them the best in the world and that they are happy, I decided that I don't want to be associated with a person doing something that goes against my core beliefs like that. That person going so clearly against uh, these values didn't sit right with me. And nonetheless, I do find myself looking back at the good times we shared and missing the input they provided. Sitting with this and thinking about it 
there was one thing that really helped me. Before we can really begin healing, it's important to name and understand the emotions we are feeling. That's where something like the Wheel of Emotions, developed by psychologist Robert Plutchnik, comes in handy. This tool <laughs> helps us break down complex emotions and see how they are connected. For instance, you might feel a mix of frustration and sadness after enforcing a boundary with someone you care about, but underneath those feelings, there could be deeper emotions like fear, fear of losing the relationship or even fear of not being accepted. By identifying these core emotions, you can start addressing them directly instead of just dealing with the surface feelings. Here's how we can use the Wheel of Emotions to process our feelings and begin healing. We identify the primary emotion, start with what you're feeling in the moment. Is it anger, sadness, fear? Sometimes just naming the feeling takes away some of its power. Then look at the connections in the wheel. If you're feeling angry, it could be linked to a deeper feeling of betray or feel of rejection. Those core emotions are often more vulnerable, but they're the key to healing. And remember that no emotion is wrong. Whatever you're feeling is valid and important. Acknowledge that it's okay to feel that way. And once you have identified these emotions, ask yourself what you really need. If fear is driving your anger, do you need more assurance from yourself or others? Understanding the root of your emotions helps you heal more efficiently. And of course, it's important to say at this part that no other person is responsible for your feelings as much as you are not responsible for their feelings. But we are social creatures. In some instances, you still need another person that is aligned with your core values to heal a wound we got. We can not heal on our own or only that this much it, it depends on circumstances right when you can name and understand the full range of emotions you're experiencing you gain clarity that clarity helps you not only stick to your boundaries but also heal from the emotional weight they may carry whatever kind of relationship romantic, friendship, family connection. When we set boundaries and the relationship changes or ends, it's not just the loss of that person or the dynamic you had, you're also grieving the future you imagined with them. Maybe you envisioned this friend or lover being in your life for the long haul, or maybe you thought your relationship with a family member would evolve into something more understanding and supportive, especially when you're growing up and are now both adults that you expect to meet on a mutual level. When you realize that might not happen, it's important to recognize that grief isn't just about death or the classic breakup. Grief happens whenever we lose a connection that mattered to us or when we realize the relationship won't be what we hoped. Yes, grief also mattered when you leave. Valued co-workers at a workspace, even though you're happy you got a different one. Part of this process is letting go of the idea that you're responsible for maintaining every relationship, no matter the cost to your well-being. Letting go doesn't mean you don't care. It means you're prioritizing your own health and it's normal to grieve that loss and to second guess something because you don't want to lose them. Now let's talk about how one can set boundaries, follow through with them and heal whether the relationship ends, changes or improves. Acknowledge your needs. Start by recognizing what you need from the relationship, whether it's more respect, space or understanding. Be clear with yourself first before communicating that to others. A lot of times the fear of setting boundaries comes from not fully understanding our own needs. Second, communicate your boundaries clearly. 
When setting boundaries, it's important to remember that they are not a way to control someone else's actions or behavior. They are about communication that you need to feel safe, respected and valued in the For example, you might say, I need more emotional availability from you or I need to take some time alone to recharge. Here's the key. When you communicate a boundary, you have to accept that the other person may not be able or willing to meet that need. And that's okay. In relationships, especially dating, if your boundaries are no for them, if their boundaries are no for you, you both need to respect that and be willing to part ways if needed. Boundaries are about self-respect, not control, and the healthiest relationships come from mutual respect for each other's limits. The same, of course, goes the other way around. If someone sets a boundary with you, it's important to honor and respect it. If you feel that the boundary is something you can't live with, then it might be a sign that the relationship isn't a good fit. Especially in romantic relationships, parting ways with respects is better than staying in a situation where boundaries are repeatedly crossed. And to go with the friendship breakup I had here, they needed more alone time and they were telling me that they are not in a place to give me more communication. But I said, this is not what I can work with. So one of us had in the end to say, until here and no further, this is where we have to draw a line, to be both somewhere that is good for us, even though there is a connection. Point three I have here is expect pushback and emotional resistance. Not everyone will understand or respect your boundaries right away, especially if they are not used to you setting limits. Expect that there may be a pushback, but remember someone's reaction doesn't invalidate your boundary. Stick to what feels right for you, even if it causes discomfort in the short term. Or let go of guilt. You're not responsible for other people's emotions. Guilt often follows when we set boundaries, but prioritizing yourself is not selfish. It's necessary for your emotional health. Five, lean into grief and reflection. Grieve the relationship if it changes or ends. Write down what you're mourning, whether it's the friendship, the family dynamic, or the person you were in that connection. Letting yourself feel that grief is part of the healing process. Number six, practice self-compassion and forgiveness. Be kind to yourself throughout this journey. Be kind always, but especially throughout this journey. Setting and sticking to boundaries can feel emotionally draining and it's easy to second guess yourself, but remind yourself that you're doing this to create healthier relationships and to take care of your emotional well-being. And lastly, number seven, celebrate growth and embrace change. Recognize the strength it takes to set boundaries and follow through with them. This is a sign of emotional growth and healing. Even if the relationship ends or changes, celebrate the fact that you stood up for yourself and made space for healthier connections moving forward. Setting boundaries and falling through isn't easy, especially when we deeply care about the person involved. Protecting your emotional and mental well-being is always worth it. Whether the relationship changes or ends, Giving yourself permission to prioritize your needs is the first step to healing and growth. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content on emotional health, personal growth, ASMR that goes into the same direction and tarot reading in the sense of shadow work. I would love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below. Remember, you deserve love the relationships and it all starts with setting boundaries.